Okay, so we're here today talking about how I thread this machine. I had a comment on one of my other videos asking how I do that and if I could go over it. So, I'll show you what I do to thread my machine. I'm using a couple of different thread colors, hopefully, so that you can see uh, how the bobbin setup works and uh, how, I, how it gets pulled through. Um, I'll show you a couple other things with the machine today while I'm doing this, but uh, to answer one question, this knob right here is for uh, stitch width adjustment. The further out I turn this knob, the shorter the stitch stroke is. So this little foot down here, I'm not sure what it's called, but it has the little teeth on it for grabbing the material and advancing the material. That foot moves uh, a shorter distance when this is threaded all the way out. So all the way in is the largest step it can make. And um, I have a little window, kind of a hole back here. So I was saying that mine has a little window back here that you can see in and you can see the mechanism for this. If your knob is sticking, I would suggest uh, trying to put some WD-40 back here. And the reason why I suggest WD-40 is that it will dissolve any of the gunk or buildup from any other oils that are back there. So if you add some WD-40 to it, um, you should be able to get it moving. Now, I use WD-40 on all of my on all of my uh, sewing machine parts, and I'll tell you why uh, later at the end. I'll kind of go over some of the lubricants that I use and why. So let's get to threading this. All right. So I set this up with the thread coming off of the front side of. Um, of the spool so that it's most in line with this guide hole. I just do that um, as sort of uh, what I consider to be a best practice straight line of sight because this is not meant to tension in any way by being across the body of the sewing machine which it would be more the case if I flipped the spool over. That's not the tensioning device so I want that to be as smooth and as straight as possible. Um, now I go down to the tensioning device and if you press this lever you get a an opening in these two discs and the discs are what create the friction that creates the tension. So that goes in there and uh, for mine the thread has to go behind this paddle in order to stay in between the two discs and then I'll have it come up through this guide. It's kind of a hook shaped piece of wire and from there it's going to go through this arm that raises and lowers with the action of the sewing machine. Mine had a piece of dust in there so it didn't want to thread but the thread goes through that and now I'm set up through the tensioning device and now this is the, the trickier part so I'm going to move the camera so you can see the front face of the sewing machine uh, while I do this next step Okay, so I've got the camera moved around here and we've already got it threaded through the tensioning device and through this arm, the arm that moves up and down when the sewing machine works. Now, um, let me trim the fuzzy end off this thread. Now it goes down through this little eyelet in the face of the sewing machine. So there, on the decorative face, there's a little eyelet that sticks out. Uh, it goes through that. And then there's a little wire guide down here on the part that holds 
the uh, needle. So let me see if I can zoom in here and get you a shot of that. Let's see here. So you can see the little eyelet there now. And let me point this down a little further. Okay. And there's focus. We're real close to it. So now this thread goes around the back side of this wire, or the front side of the wire actually. It's uh, shaped kind of like a U and it wraps around the shaft that drives the needle up and down. After it goes through that, it goes through the eye of the needle. I can set my foot down to give myself more clearance and I already trimmed the fuzzy end off of my thread. So let me thread it through the needle. Okay. So now it's through the needle. I'm going to raise my foot back up and pull the thread between the slot in the, in the foot and out the back. And I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now I'm going to get to uh, the bobbin portion of this. So I'm just going to make a couple more adjustments with the camera and hopefully make it to where you can see the bobbin. The bobbin set up here. Okay, so the bobbin and the carrier and everything is underneath this plate. Has a little indention for your finger. Slide that back out of the way. And then if your if your bobbin is not aligned with this hole, you can rotate your wheel and it will move the bobbin over with the hole. So there's a bobbin carrier in here. It uh, looks kind of like a little shuttle or something like that. Now that bobbin carrier doesn't have a bobbin in it right now. And um, I'll show you how... Uh, to th put the bobbin in here in a way that makes it work. Otherwise, I don't think it works properly. So here's the bobbin that I've already got spooled up, and I think this bobbin... This bobbin is a reproduction, I believe. I got this bobbin along with four, four or five other ones from MySewingMachineParts.com and I'm about to have to switch batteries here, so give me a minute. Alright, we're back. New batteries. Um, so I was saying, MySewingMachineParts.com They sell these, I think in a 10-pack for $10. I believe they are reproductions. Uh, the parts and pieces just look too, uh, too new to even be new old stock. The brass doesn't have any tarnish on it when you get them. Um, they just, they appear to be new. I also picked up a belt for this from MySewingMachineParts.com. It is this Alpha Sew, or Alpha, Alpha Sew Quality Products. And part number 60013, it gives you a, I think it's a 68 inch treadle belt. And it comes with the uh, staple the, it's like a heavy-duty metal staple that holds the two ends together. You have to cut it to length for your machine. Um, but once you do that and put the staple through it, it works like it was brand new. So that's where I picked up my, uh, my new treadle belt. So let's, I'm going to move the camera around again so you can see the uh, bobbin area better. And then... Uh, show you what the rest of threading this looks like. Okay, got the camera moved around. Hopefully you can see in here. I'll try to adjust the focus as we go. Um, so I have the bobbin here and this is what's important about uh, putting one of these bobbins into the carrier.
Okay, and we're back. So, I've got the bobbin thread untangled. It, it was just threaded in through one of its own loops. So, there's an important part to getting this to thread into the carrier properly, or the shuttle. I'm not sure if you call this the shuttle and that the carrier, or what you might call it, but um, the way that you get this to thread in here it has to come up through this slot, go underneath this plate, wrap back around and come out this hole um, in order to work correctly. And in order to get that done, you have to have this in the right orientation with the, the thread coming off in the correct direction. And there's only two ways to do it. So if you get it wrong, it's real easy to go back and do it the other way. So the thread has to come off the top. So I need to flip this over. So the thread's now coming off the top. And the thread needs to come off the end that you slide in first. So you see how I just unwound it a little bit? And I'm just going to give it a few wraps to where now the thread is coming off the top on the end that I'm going to slide into the shuttle. Okay, so I'm going to put that together, sliding it in here, and I'm going to hold it in with my thumb, and I'm going to grab this extra thread. I hope you can see this, my hands aren't in the way. And then I'm pulling that thread up the slot to the top. And then once I get it to the top, this is why it has to come off the top edge of the bobbin because now it's pulling from back here inside the carrier. So the angle helps you get over the pointed part underneath this metal flat spring thing. So now the angle of the thread is back there and you can just give it kind of a lift to where you're pulling up on it and then pull it while lifting pull it back towards the back of the carrier and you see it just slipped underneath that metal thing not sure what that's called, and you keep pulling it backwards until it comes out of the hole and it's on the upper side of their little tab that's on the shuttle. Once it's on the upper side, I pull it back down this way and it ensures that it's in there correctly. Uh, I might be out of focus, there you go. It, hopefully you can see that. Now, I set the shuttle in there it goes in the carrier. It has a little indention in it right here. And that indention uh, hooks onto the this carrier right here. So I just slide it in point first and drop it in place. It just sits in there. It's not held in by any screws or any clips or anything like that. It just rides in there. Now at this point you could close this, uh, but I don't, I don't need to do that. What I need to do is hold on to the thread back here so that this thread does not get pulled down into the hole and stays down in there. I actually am going to use this thread to pull the bobbin thread up through the small feed hole in the bottom of the foot area. So while holding this thread, uh, I'm not going to hold on to the bobbin thread. It can just go underneath there. I don't need that. I'm just going to make one full rotation. And hopefully you can see that. Let me adjust the focus a little bit here and zoom in for you. Okay, let's see here. Hopefully you can see that the orange thread is now picked up through the bottom of the foot. And I'm going to pull pull that. I usually use my scissors because they can slide right underneath the foot real easy and I just pull off to one side until I've got enough out that I can grab it. And Now you can grab this um, orange thread from the bobbin area and pull both of them straight to the rear without, keep, without getting them tangled and you're ready to sew if you put the plate back on. So there you go. Now you've put your bobbin in, you've pulled your bobbin thread up through the bottom and you're ready to go. The tension knob for the thread, that's going to affect the way that your stitch works. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to get into the details of how to tell if you're uh, stitching with the proper tension or not. That's not what the video is about. We'll just talk about how to thread it. So that's how it's all threaded. Let me see if I can give you a little close up on some of these parts that we talked about. So the, here is the tensioning tensioning device and the thread goes through a little wire up to the arm there then back down to the little eyelet down to the wire on the shaft that drives the needle and then down through the tip of the needle so this setup works for me um, I hope it is correct this is how I've been sewing with the machine and I do so with the machine from time to time. So there it is. And all the way back to the spool. Alright. So hopefully that answers your questions about how to thread the machine. Um, that's all for the threading portion of it. I'm going to talk about uh, the lubricant that I use and why I use that lubricant and then where to lube the machine and then I'm going to uh, actually take this machine out of the out of the cabinet show you how it's mounted in there and the underside and if you're gonna if you're going to get one of these machines used obviously you can't buy them new anymore but if you're gonna buy one or you have one or somebody gives you one um, some of the things that I did to make this machine run properly uh, and it, it actually doesn't take a whole lot of work, but it does take some work uh, to get the old gunk out of them, get the get lubricant where you need lubricant, and get these machines running really, really smoothly and sounding like that other video that I've got of just the machine running. So I'll do that now. All right. Thanks for watching. If this is where you want to cut out, I understand, uh, but we're going to go over some other stuff. So, I talked about the fact that I use WD-40 in all, in all of the sewing machine parts. I use this uh, applicator bottle, and really the benefit of this is it has sort of like a syringe needle on it, but it's blunted, so it's just a flat tip cut off. It works with the same interlock sort of device. It's a you know 90 or 180 degree turn to lock it on there. Um, this cap doesn't isn't uh, doesn't allow you to remove and replace that needle but um, you can get some of these that do. I think this bottle was originally designed for applying acrylic glue so that might be how you look it up. I think it was specifically for clear acrylics. Anyway, I write WD-40 on here because that's what's in here. kind of keeps me straight because I have several of these bottles and I have some with um, a bubble solution for leak detecting, different types of oils. But this is what I use and this point allows me to get down inside these oil ports on the top and the bottom of the machine inside this little window from the back that I talked about. Uh, it really allows you to put just a few small drops of WD-40. I don't use a spray can on this, obviously. You don't want residue from WD-40 getting on whatever you're sewing. You don't really want it getting on the cabinet itself. So this is a really clean and easy way to put WD-40 right where you want it. really like this. I don't just use it for the sewing machine. I use it for everything. Now, what did I used to use and why don't I use it anymore? I actually used to use rim oil. I would just unscrew this cap and pour the contents of this bottle into one of these applicators and I used that for a long time. It's a gun oil. It has some um, it has some various technologies built into it but you see here it says with Teflon. I don't know if you can see that on there but it says with Teflon lubricant. Uh, and I thought maybe that was going to be a good deal. I thought, you know, hey, uh, Remington, maybe can't go wrong. It's a good brand name. But what I found out with this oil is that if you leave it for a couple of months, or let's say you put it in a little pan or a dish and you let it evaporate, 
what you're left with is a very sticky orange uh, gummy type paste. It's, uh, it, it's really, it looks a lot like the gummed up oils that you might find inside a machine before you take it apart and clean it. So I feel like this is problematic. I wouldn't want to put it on here, apply it throughout the machine, and let the machine set for several months or years and then come back to the machine and try to use it because then the machine's going to be gummed up with that sticky orange substance all over uh, the inside of the machine. So I stopped using this. I'm actually phasing it out from anywhere. I don't even use it on my guns anymore because of that. So I'm not knocking it. I used it for years and years and years without a problem. And I think as long as you clean your gun regularly and you, you know, you take it apart and use it, take it apart, use it, you know, just go through the whole deal with your gun. I don't think it's a problem. So if you're using this on your firearm, you can probably keep doing it and it's not a problem. But um, I'm just phasing it out from the things that I do. I used to really like this stuff. It's just not for me anymore. So that's uh, the lubricant that I use and why. And uh, we'll get into taking this machine out of the cabinet and looking at some of the some of the points that I look at whenever I start working on a new machine.